Hello everybody, this is Delpha, and we're back in Sunrider Liberation Day Return. Let's carry on. Schultz kept his hands on top of his head as a marine shoved him to his knees. A wall of well-armed troops and full body armor stood in front of him. The human wall parted to let a man through to face shields. It was... himself! Past Kyoto! Oh no! Well, I'll be damned. Ah, oh, crap. Kyoto Shields clenched his teeth as he stared down Kyoto Shields. You really do look like an identical copy. Just then, Chigara emerged from the room, escorted by a pair of crewmen. She immediately ran to the other Shields and embraced him. Uh, Captain, I'm so glad you're here. Just what in the world's going on? I feel like the doctor accidentally prescribed me the wrong medication and I'm hallucinating. Oh, trust me. This is real. The ship's security has been compromised by these two intruders. One of them happens to look identical to me. This fellow right here. Ah, oh, fuck. My cover's been blown. And now Chigar's playing along with my past self's suspicions. And on top of all that, does my voice seriously sound like that? Yeah, it does. I'm sorry, I can't really help it. I sound so lame. Well, I'm sorry. This is the only voice I have. I thought my voice was so much deeper. Ugh. As if I don't already have enough problems. I don't know what he sought to gain by kidnapping you, but I intend to find out. Yes. You're making a mistake. That girl's not who you think she is. In just a few hours, she'll... She just lost his words when another face emerged from the wall of Marines. Captain, we've secured Akari as well. As far as we can tell, she does not appear to be an imposter. She is insisting that all of this is a mistake and that this man for us is the real Kyoto Shields. So he's pulled Akari too then. Get her to the sick bay and make sure she's alright. Take him away boys. We can find out what he's after once he's secured in the brig. Resume the search for the other imposter. Keep the ship on high alert until she has been found. Understood sir. As the marines pushed Shields towards the brig, he tried to face Ava. Ava! You've got to trust me, I'm Kyoto Shields. She got us a prototype, just as you said. If you don't stop it by tomorrow, everything we work for will be lost. You'll find a hollow inside the room. Look at it, and the evidence it holds. One of the Marines pounded Shields' gut with the butt of his rifle. Shut up! <coughs> he felt two strong hands grip his shoulders and drag him to the brig. Oof. T minus 47 hours until Liberation Day Massacre, 11 hours until Chigara enters the mainstream. Ooh. Shields faced his doppelganger as he spoke through the intercom. Listen to me, you dumb oath. Technically, you're calling yourself dumb. I really am you, just from the future. I've come to warn you of a massacre which will happen. He had repeated his desperate warnings to his past self for the better part of the past two hours, but it was clear that he was not getting through. Chigara's a prototype. If she enters the mainstream a few hours from now, should be mind controlled by the leader of the prototypes and carry out. The other shields cut him off, his voice cracking with impatience. All right, and never about Chigara. I want to know how you got aboard this ship and who you're actually working for. You're a prototype, aren't you? Have you guys started generating clones of me too now? Look, it was pretty weird when we discovered you prototypes were making artificial clones of Chigara, but now me too? Just what is up with you guys and making clones of people on board this ship? What were you trying to gain by trying to recruit Akari into your mission? And for what purpose did you kidnap Chigara? Ah, oh, it's hopeless. There's no way in hell I'm ever going to convince this blockhead that Chigara is going to cause the Liberation Day Massacre at this rate. The other shield sighed in exasperation on the other side of the glass. Honestly, Shields was inclined to do the same. He was one agonizing, stubborn individual to argue with. All of a sudden, he felt compelled to apologize to Ava for his personality once all of this was over. He had never known he was so stubborn until now. Finally, the other shields left the intercom with an irritated look on his face and spoke to Ava. A solid layer of reinforced neoglass separates shields from the outside world, making it impossible to hear anything outside of his little fish tank. If only I could hear what they were saying. Wait a minute, I remember reading a maintenance request form about this holding cell, something about the cell door failing to seal completely. Maybe if I'm lucky, it hasn't been fixed yet. 
She also pretended to crumble to the floor in defeat, and put his ears up against the crack where the gate came down on the floor. Sure enough, he could now faintly hear the other shields and Ava's exchange. Captain, perhaps we should consider the prisoner's warning seriously. Ikari is convinced that this kit of shields is telling the truth. Further, the hollow we found within the room directly refutes our doctor's prior finding that Chigara is a human and throws a grave a shadow on all of the doctor's actions for the entire duration of this voyage. In fact, I believe our next move should be to detain both the chief engineer and our acting medical officer under suspicion of espionage. No, first off, he's not Kyoto Shields. Ava, you're still going on about that? How many times do I have to tell you? The prototypes just want to sow division within our ranks. This imposter's probably just their latest attempt at the same strategy. In fact, everything here falls under the same pattern of them, trying to get us to turn on each other. We're one family on board this ship. It's the bond which makes us strong. The prototypes are trying to undermine it. No, you idiot! It's you who's fixated on your goddamn family that you can't see what's obvious to everyone else! Shields nearly banged his head on the cell door in frustration at hearing himself talk. Someone, please give this man a good whoop to the head. Technically, you'll be giving it to yourself then. Just hit yourself. There you go. But Captain! That's enough, Commander! <sighs> Continue to interrogate the prisoner. Find out what the prototypes are after. That's an order. Understood, sir. With that, the other shields left the brig while Ava was left by herself, trembling with anger. Tch! It is you who cannot see the truth, Captain. With that, she stormed off into the hallway as well. She was left alone inside his cell. All he could hear was the sound of his own breathing inside the tiny glass cage. He paced nervously inside the cell as time continued to tick by. Now that he was stripped of his uniform and was wearing nothing but a basic prisoner's jumpsuit, he had no way of telling the time anymore. Now what? Do I wait for Claw to show up again? Just where does she go anyways? God damn it! T manners! 45 hours before the Liberation Day Massacre! 9 hours until Chikara enters the mind stream and turns evil. A short time later, he heard someone knock on the holding tank. She was looked up to see Akari on the opposite side of the glass, fiddling with the wiring of the brig door. After a few seconds, the gate raised open. He ran out and met Akari. Damn, that was close! Boy, am I glad to see you still in one piece, Cap. Thankfully, your other self's convinced himself that you're a prototype, so it was a piece of cake to get him to let me go once I acted like I had been fooled too. Honestly, something's been really off with your other self lately. I bet it's his new girlfriend. Guys sure change at the drop of a pin the moment they get hitched, huh? Ikari, please don't talk about my other self as if I'm not here. After I fooled the other shields into thinking I was totally normal, I hacked into the ship's security system and managed to sneak here. Everything else is history. Thanks for busting me out. Well, it's not like I busted you out of jail because I like you or anything, you know, backer. You have a future to save, right? Anyway, it won't be long until security finds out what happened. Here, take this. They carry past him a new set of captain's uniforms. Best I could get my hands on. It should still contain your old command clearance. Thanks. Uh, she just looked around uncomfortably for a place to change, but didn't particularly find anywhere useful. Turn your head. Ah! Ikari covered her eyes with her hands moments before Shields quickly pulled down his gel trousers and slipped into his uniform. Y y you idiot! Give me more advanced notice before you start stripping! Ah, oh, you liked it, Ikari. Don't worry. This is hardly to be the time to be worried about that. Uh, I can't believe you! Shields finished putting on his uniform. Alright, show's over. Let's move. Into the maintenance tunnel. Come on! Ikari swiped a strange-looking device on the tunnel's gate, instantly unlocking it. She also assumed it was some sort of improvised skeleton key, and crawled into the tunnel without asking any questions. Ooh. Once they were safely deep within the Sunrider's mechanical innards, the two of them paused to decide the next course of action. First order of business is to send the encrypted message to Montana. Then we have to figure out a way to put Chigara out of commission. But now that security is on high alert, getting into my room is not going to be a walk in the park. Think you can distract the security for a bit? Heh, <laughs> leave that to me. Okay, let's move. A guy in shields climbed out of the service tunnel and dropped down near the captain's office. 
As expected, a pair of marines stood in front of their destination. Rifles held at the ready. We're going to have to figure out a way to get them out of there. It won't be long now until they figure out you've escaped. But now, I can do this. Nikai pulled out a hollow and hacked into the Sunrider security information network in an instant. Cracking the system's a cinch if you know all the back doors. And I'm the one who built the system, so... Nikari created an alert on the network that intruders had been sighted in the sickbay. Ah, nice. I guess it pays to have the chief of security on your side. Let's go. Shields breathed in relief as he entered his office. But just because I'm home doesn't mean I can afford to relax. He ran to his desk and activated the FTL. He put in a request to contact Fontana on board the packed assault carrier Vi Victus. The transmission kept beeping, waiting for a response. Jules tapped his desk in impatience as the beeps continued. Come on, you blasted pretty boy. What the hell are you doing? Pick up the damned phone! Jules' chest felt as if it was going to burst as the transmission kept beeping. What the hell is taking so long? Fontana! Taking a bath? Preening in front of the mirror? What? Don't tell me it takes a full hour for you to get dressed and groomed for a goddamn phone call! You, you goddamn girly boy bastard! There he is. <laughs> oh dear. Ah, oh. You know, Shields and Fontana could be best friends, if you ask me. That'd be quite fun to see. Just as Shields uttered those words, Fontana's face appeared above his desk. Or maybe more like just before he uttered those words. Fontana stared at Shields with a decidedly annoyed look on his face. He just disappears! <laughs> he then cut the transmission. Shit, 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 shit! She was furiously tapped the button to resend the transmission request. Finally, Fontara appeared once more. What is it? Shields! Surely you did not call me in the depths of the night merely to comment about my face! No, no, no! Listen to me, Fontana. This is goddamn important. Your ships have been. Just then, he heard the door to his office open. A low marine wandered in. Sh shit! Fontana, duck! Uh, what? Shields and Kari dived behind his desk. Fontana instinctively ducked down as well upon seeing everyone else react the same way. Fontana and Shields grimaced when they realized they were practically sitting on top of each other. Ah! Fontana's hologram <laughs> partially merged with Shields' body. Uh, are you making a. Shh! There, there, baby. Everything will be okay. Quiet! No, oh, quiet! <laughs> Listen, your ships have been hacked with a prototype virus. Tomorrow, they'll use it to assume full control of your ships and attack the combined fleet. You have to do everything in your power to undo the virus. W what? Shields! If you speak these words in jest, I'm not joking, but I've got to go. Do it, or else we're all going to die tomorrow. With that, Shields cut the transmission. Well, that went about as bad as it possibly could. Let's hope he doesn't just brush it off as a joke. No man like Fontana would be far too careful to just blow off a warning like that. Cap, one bogey, coming our way. Just one. I think we can take him. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, surprise! Oh, three. The two of them leaped over the desk at the same time, sending a pile of unfinished paperwork into the air. Unfortunately, a rogue sheet of paperwork landed right in front of Shields' face and obscured his vision. SHIT! The Marine tossed Akari aside and raised his rifle simultaneously as Shields tore the sheet of paper from his face and lunged for him. They collided and fell to the floor. Shields immediately put his hand over the Marine's mouth and tried to strangle him. Unfortunately, with a swift knee to Shields' gut, the Marine managed to regain the upper hand. Just as the Marine raised his gun to finish Shields off, Ikari appeared behind the Marine and smashed his head in with Shields' prized teapot. Gah! Gah! He cringed, expecting his prized heirloom to now be in a million pieces. To his utter surprise, the teapot remained completely unharmed, and judging from the unconscious Marine, apparently hit harder than reinforced steel. Wait a minute, she got enforced that pot for me. Damn, that girl really must have done something incredible to it, for it to still be in one piece after being smashed up against someone's skull like that. 
I wonder if it's pretty much indestructible. Still, Jules took the teapot away from Akari and returned it to his shelf. Be careful with that. Uh, alright. They ran out of the office before any more marines could show up. Never mind. However, as soon as they left Shields' office, the duo came face to face with a squad of marines. Shit! Freeze! Completely outnumbered and surrounded by rifles, Shield had no choice but to put his hands on top of his head. Tch, not quite what I was hoping for, but we could actually use this to our advantage. He motioned for Akari to follow his lead. She slowly put her hands on top of her head as well. Alright, we surrender. But I'm willing to talk. Take me to your leader. Take me to your leader. No need. The other shields emerge from behind the squad of marines with the commander. You got some guts breaking into my office. What are you trying to pull in there? I just saved your ass by warning Fontana that the prototype sabotaged his ships. You'll thank me for it later. Hey, uh, other captain? He's telling the truth. I saw him contact Fontana myself. You gotta believe us. Cause you're being fooled big time by Chigara. Ikari, I don't know what's going on, but you helped this imposter escape by hacking into our security system. When I brought you on board this ship, you swore that you would play by my rules. What happened to that? H hey, snap out of it! Y you're not acting like yourself! Captain, I'm inclined to agree. The past few days, you have exhibited strange symptoms whenever we broach the topic of our chief engineer. Now, even our chief of security believes that Chigara seeks to sabotage our mission. Should we not reevaluate our approach given these new developments? I don't see any new developments, just the same old prototype plot to split this ship apart. Commander, you are out of line. With all due respect, Captain. Enough! Oi, this is definitely weird. The Captain's acting like he's been mind controlled or something. Tch, was this what the prototypes were hoping for? To use Chigar to control him? Shields, you've got to do something to make him snap out of it, or else we're all going to be sharing a cell with Lin. Oh yeah. It's useless. He's fallen completely under the control of the prototypes. The Kai's right. It's do or die time. Shields slowly lowered his hands from his head to the sound of the marines locking and loading their rifles. Shields, how about we settle this man to man? I'm you. You're me. Believe me, I've stood in your shoes before. I was so damned cocky that I couldn't see the truth dangling right in front of my eyes. Marines, hold your fire. Alrighty then. Hello, pair self. The other shields marched up to his mirror image. They stood face to face. Alright, I'll bite. If you really are me, you should know all that Chigara has done for us. She's had hundreds of opportunities to kill us before, and yet each time she has defended the ship. To question her now would be tantamount to betraying my family. That's because she's a sleeper spy. Right now, all she's doing is winning your influence. But when the time comes, she'll lose control of her body and destroy all that you work for. If so, what would you have me do? Kill her? Imprison her for life? Protect her from becoming controlled by the prototypes. This is for Chigara's sake as well, and for the lives of everyone on board this ship, and the billions who will be saved if this war ends now. You don't know what my future is like. If you think you're protecting Chigara right now, you're gonna be in for a hell of a shock. You've got to do this for her. All lies. Chigara. Chigara will save us. She's all that matters. I would betray her. She is everything. The other shields grabbed shields by the scuff of his collar. Staring deep within his past self's eyes, Shields only saw a massive, empty void as deep as the darkest trench. All I need is her! Shields struggled against his other self's grip as he raved with madness. Youth, being corrupted! Ava was right. This version of myself has become a slave to the prototypes. At this rate, reasoning with him is completely useless. What has Shigara done to him? Marines, hold your fire! I'm taking command of this situation! The captain has gone insane! The Marines looked around in a panic, at a loss as to what to do. On one hand, the captain of the ship had just relieved the commander of her authority. 
but it was clear from his mad raving that the captain was no longer fit to lead them. Y you moron! Schultz clenched his teeth. Wake up! Oh! Why are you hitting yourself? Schultz shoved his past self away and delivered an almighty punch right to his other version's kisser. G Ugh! The other shields fell flat on his back against the floor. Schultz stood over him and bellowed. He bellowed the truth, which he only knew, for he was not speaking to an adversary or a prototype puppet. He was speaking to himself. This isn't about Chigara. This was never about her. All of it is to exercise the ghost which haunts you by the bedside every night. The ghost of the one person you regret failing the most. <coughs> I know. I try to move on by finding a new future. A future far from war, surrounded by my children. But all of that was a lie. A deception used by the enemy to control me. Me! Nothing I do will ever return Marae to me. Nor will it absolve me of the crime of abandoning millions to die that day. But such is war. In war, scars are opened. Scars which may never close. Scars which we must wear for the remainder of our lives. But I'll be damned if I let more of my crew die because I could not face the truth. The dead are gone. Some battles end in nothing but defeat. It's time for you to face the truth. Both eyes open. Tears ran down both their eyes. Those were the words both men lived by. No matter the torment, no matter the comfort Jigara may offer, Kyo's shield would not close his eyes to the galaxy he needed to defend. His other self's face returned to normal. Commander, revoke the chief engineer's security access and have her detained. The tension finally deflated. The marines put down their rifles. All parties exhaled in relief. Sir, the ghost which spawned from that wretched day will never leave my side. All the more reason she should not gain new friends in the afterlife. With that, the other Kyoto shield stood up and straightened his uniform. I am conveying an emergency staff meeting. We will have to devise a new battle plan without Chigara's participation. Commander, get the lieutenant. As for my other self, I am sure his insight will be most valuable in the coming battle. Heh, <laughs> after all, he's at least as smart as I am. I wish Kyoto could just smile. It's annoying me now. <laughs> Despite the two men being at each other's throats a second ago, Schultz could not help but chuckle at his own joke. Mm. So, have we succeeded? I guess we're not on a bad end then. I don't know.